All right guys, today I'm gonna to be rebuilding the water pump on my 2001 Raptor 660. This should be the same routine for all 2001 through 2005. And the reason I'm doing this is because last time before my head gasket blew, the weep hole was actually seeping out some coolant. Which the weep hole is on the bottom of the water pump. There's a little tiny hole here and it will just kind of coat your frame down here in coolant as you're riding. Now you might be wanting to do the same thing if your weep hole is seeping coolant or if you have a oil and coolant mixture because this is the only two places that this could happen unless you got a crack somewhere, which is highly unlikely. So let's get to it. Now before we get started, you need to go ahead and drain the coolant. If you need any help with that, I've got a video up here if you'd like to see it. But after you drain the coolant, you want to go ahead and take off this lower radiator hose that goes to the water pump along with the one that goes to the top of the water pump to the jug. Just make sure that you unscrew all these clamps and take them off. Then, in order to get the water pump off of the engine, you want to go ahead and take out this bolt up here up top, this one down at the bottom, and this one over here at the side. These two hold the cover on to the water pump. These ones mount it to the engine. Take these three off, and then the water pump should slide out. And now we can go ahead and move on to the bench. So now over on to the bench, I have my water pump here. As you can tell, I just have my cover held in with uh, these two bolts. I'm going to go ahead and start by taking this cover off and set this off to the side. Then starting on the back side with the nylon gear, there is a snap ring. I'm going to go ahead and take that off with some snap ring pliers. And then I'm going to go ahead and start laying these out in order. So now I can take the nylon gear off of there. And then inside the shaft, you should have like a little dowel pin. Go ahead and take that out. Then behind it, you have another snap ring. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. And now the entire impeller and shaft should be able to slide through. Just like that. Now you should have a seal on this side. I've noticed that OEM and some aftermarket kits will have different designs for this seal. So I'm going to go ahead and stick a screwdriver in there, making sure that I don't gouge the outside surface and pop this seal out. Just like that. And I'm also going to note down the orientation that this was put in. Now with the steel that I have inside here, I can tell that this outer lip here is where it'll actually contact the surface. So in order to get that seal out, I'm going to have to either use a slide hammer by sticking the ends inside of this, tightening it down so the jaws will open and then pull it out, or I need to go through the bearing with a screwdriver or like a chisel and knock it out that way, but I just need to ensure that if I do it that way, I need to be cautious so I don't score up the inside of the water pump. So I finally got the water pump seal out. I actually ended up using this punch to reach down in the bearing and start hitting on the back side of it. As you can see, it started tearing it up but it took quite a few hard punches before this thing finally came out. And again, marking the orientation of that the blue lining here goes on the inside of the water pump. And now to get the bearing out, I'm gonna go ahead and just find a socket that fits on the inner diameter of the bearing and then drive it out. And just like that, the bearing is out. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the O-ring out of here using a pick. And there's one o-ring and then for the water pump cover I'm gonna go ahead and take that o-ring out too and lastly on the impeller and the shaft as you can see there is a seal that's on the inside here that you're gonna also need to replace so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that out using a pick as well And I'm not even using the pick that hard on here. I obviously want to ensure that I'm not scoring up the shaft, but I also don't want to score up the seal housing. So whenever I'm doing this, I just make sure that I go real easy with this and make sure that I'm not aiming this towards the outside and then scratching up the inside surface. And again, noting the orientation of the seals, the outer seal faces flesh up against the impeller and the white seal faces the opposite direction of the impeller. So now that I have disassembled all of the water pump, 
I'm going to take it over to the parts washer and clean it up. I'm also going to try to deburr some of the hard places in here where I'm assuming somebody must have had a hard time getting these seals out. So I'm going to try to deburr those just a little bit. All right, now back from the parts washer, I have all of the water pump housing, the cover, the nylon gear, and also the propeller and the shaft all cleaned up, uh, especially for all of the seal surfaces and such. Like inside of this uh, impeller, it's really hard to kind of clean some of that out, but there was a lot of stuff that needed to come out of it. Also for the water pump housing, I did have to take a like chainsaw file and deburr a little bit of a notch that was on the inside surface here. So I'm hoping that's not going to cause too much of an issue. I don't know exactly how that would have got there, but I'm hoping it's not going to cause me any issues. Now for the water pump rebuild kit, I did go with a hot rods rebuild. I have not used this before, nor am I sponsored by them. I just hope that this will work well. And starting off with rebuilding the water pump, I'm going to go ahead and grab the bearing out of my new kit. I'm going to go ahead and set it in place. And then I'm going to find a socket that is the exact same size as the outside diameter of this and try to make sure that it is level when I'm hitting it down and making sure that it is completely flat with this surface while I'm hitting it down so I'm just going to have to go slow with it and also whenever it starts making a different noise while you're hitting it that means that it's all the way in. Alright it's starting to make a different tone while hitting it in so that should mean that the bearing is all the way in place where it needs to be. The bearing does still move which is good so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of lube on the inside of the bearing and for the bearings itself. And now next is actually the oil seal, which apparently mine did not have, that sits on the outside of the bearing here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I have the lettering facing outwards towards me. And go ahead and get that installed right there in the middle. I'm going to have to grab a socket and gently tap it all the way in and make sure that it's square. Now next up we have the water pump seal. Again, the side with the blue is what goes on the inside of the water pump. So I'm going to have to find a socket that will ride just on the outside of this seal. So whenever I'm pressing it in, I'm not going to damage the water pump seal. And after quite a few good hits on there, I finally got that seal installed. I made sure the lip of the seal was perfectly flush down on the inside diameter here. So now this housing is done. So now to go ahead and move on to the impeller, I have the brand new seal right here. This is the one that has the inside seal and then the outside one. Again, the black one is supposed to be up against the inside of the impeller. But before we put it on there, I also have to put some coolant on the outside of this seal. And now the shaft is dry right now, so I can go ahead and put the new seal on here and get it pressed into place. And the seal should just be able to be pressed in place with your fingers. Just make sure it's pressed all the way inside the impeller. So now I can grab my water pump housing and go ahead and put the shaft in. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and lube up the shaft. And the manual does not specify putting lubrication on the shaft. I know that some people will actually put grease on it. I'm just going to use engine oil that I'm actually going to put in the four wheeler. And now with the housing and the impeller, I can go ahead and start assembling the entire water pump. And with the impeller pushed in, as you can tell, there is a spring on there. When you press it in, you got to press it in and then you can see the snap ring groove down there. You're going to have to push this in and then get the snap ring, the last one that you took off, into that groove. So the easiest way to do this is go ahead and put the snap ring on there. And now all you have to do is press the impeller through and then slide the snap ring down with your fingers. Just like that, clicked into place. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's actually in the groove all the way around, which it appears to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just double check that the impeller still moves which it does. I now grab the pin from earlier and go ahead and slide that on in about evenly. And then grab the nylon gear and line it up with that pin. Just like that, pins in place and a nylon gear is also on the shaft. And lastly, go ahead and grab the last snap ring and put it on. And again, just go ahead and make sure that the impeller actually moves pretty freely in there. 
And now to grab the orange o-ring and before I install it, I'm going to go put a little bit of engine oil on it. Now I can go ahead and install it on the water pump. And now for the water pump cover, we can go ahead and put on the black o-ring. This one also is going to have to have a little bit of engine oil on it. Now I can go ahead and put the cover on the water pump. And now to install the water pump bolts, which is one here and one here. And for the engine side of things, it's best to go ahead and put a paper towel or something for the inside of your engine so whenever you're cleaning the gasket surface, you don't lock anything down into your engine. Mine's honestly pretty clean, so I'm literally just going to spray a rag with some brake clean and give it a good wipe down since I don't seem to have any gasket debris or o-ring debris left over. Now I can grab the water pump, ensure that the o-ring is still fully seated inside there so it does not get pinched, and go ahead and put it in place. You might also have a little bit of trouble getting the impeller gear to actually mesh with the gear on the inside of the case. That's okay, all you have to do is just rotate it ever so slightly and you should be able to fully press it on there. And then you can go ahead and start in the longer bolts, which goes right here, and one on the bottom. Then you have a slightly shorter one that goes on the end. Now you can go ahead and torque down the bolts in a crisscross pattern to 7.2 foot-pounds. Now you can grab your lower radiator hose. You probably honestly didn't have to take yours off, but I have mine off. Now we can install the radiator hose that goes from the water pump to the jug. Now once that you have filled the entire cooling system with coolant, you want to leave the radiator cap off and start the engine up so you can bleed the cooling system. There is no bleeder valve anywhere on this four-wheeler, so what you need to do is leave the radiator cap open and you want to run the four-wheeler until it gets hot. Eventually the thermostat will open up and once it opens up you will know because a lot of the coolant will start actually flowing. The coolant should be steady whenever it's trying to reach that temperature. Once it hits the temperature for the thermostat to start opening up, you will start seeing the coolant run up to the top and then it will start bubbling up way at the top. Once you start bubbling, your fan might eventually turn on, it might not, but it's just more so to check to make sure that you have no air bubbles and that your thermostat is working. But once you're at that stage, you can go ahead and turn your ATV off, you can go ahead and put your radiator cap back on, and then if you start it back up, within a few minutes your fan should turn on. If it does not, you might want to go ahead and check the electrical circuit. The first thing you can do is take off the sensor connector down at the bottom of the radiator and while your key is turned, you want to go ahead and short that connector. If you short that connector, your fan should turn on if everything is okay. If not, you obviously have a fault somewhere that you should probably go ahead and either diagnose or send it to a dealer to fix. So yeah, that wraps up this video. So as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. And if you'd like more videos like this, please subscribe.